Welcome to C102. My name is Allison Lambright and I am going to be your lecturer this semester and I am so excited to get started and to get to know you guys. I wanted to start off by saying that I know that this online format is scary for a chemistry class, but rest assured that I'll be here for you even if it's just through a screen. Don't be afraid to contact me at any time and I'll do my best to help you guys out. In terms of the class, you'll also notice that each video, I might have a little bit different of a background. Sometimes I'll be in a classroom. Sometimes I might be in a lab. Sometimes I'll be at home. Uh, because of that, there's a possibility I won't be able to fully control the people walking behind me or accidentally coming in the room while I'm recording for you guys on Zoom. The reason I say this is because we will be doing a lot of work together on Zoom throughout the semester. And I want to be clear in the fact that it's completely fine if you have unexpected visitors, whether they're human or otherwise. I always love to see cats walking across the screen. Additionally, if people show up in your background, there's a messy room, or maybe you just don't even want to show your background, that's completely fine, no judgment here. You, and you also always have the option of turning off your video for our class. So with all of those anxiety inducing points aside, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. As I said, my name is Allison Lambright, but I go by Allie. And if you're comfortable calling me that, you're absolutely welcome to. Additionally, if you're not as comfortable, you may call me Miss Lambright. I am currently a graduate student and I am finishing my PhD in organic chemistry this year. This is the laboratory group that I am a part of. This is the Brown group at IU, uh, led by Professor uh, M. Kevin Brown here. So some of you guys might have had him as a professor before as well. So you guys might know him. As much as I would love to tell you guys about all of the research that I do in the Brown lab, I also wanted to give you guys a little bit of a heads up in that chemists are not always just the stereotypical super geeky kind of people, but we also do a lot of fun things. So I wanted to show you some of the fun things that our lab uh, like to do together. For example, recently we went on a trip to Kentucky and we went on uh, hiking on cliffs and we also went horseback riding around the Kentucky Derby. Uh, additionally, our group, um, all of us, like to run or we don't all like to run but we like to run together so we did the hoosier half marathon together some people running the 5k and some people running the half marathon and of course we had to have matching t-shirts and then lastly we love to go to conferences together and share our chemistry with other chemists and other people around the world so this was a conference that was actually held here at iu and it was an absolute blast in addition to my work in the lab, I have a few other parts of me that are really important to who I am as a person that I, I'll go ahead and show you guys now. Uh, first off, here's a picture of most of my family. Uh, it includes my parents and my siblings and their spouses, as well as my niece and nephew who are the cutest and smartest little kiddos around. Um, we are all from Atlanta, Georgia, so I'll often go home to visit them um, as often as I can. A little bit of background, I went to Merc Mercer University. Uh, it is a small private school down uh, about an hour and a half or so south of Atlanta. Um, we are not very well known for football at all, but we are well known for our basketball program because in 2013, we knocked Duke University out of the NCAA tournament so that was a really big point for our school. And if you are a basketball fan, you might remember this from seven years ago now. The other thing that I'm really passionate about other than chemistry is my work with the Special Olympics. So I will often be found on weeknights coaching my Special Olympics gymnastics team, uh, which are shown here. This is not all of them, but just who could attend the competition, that's particular competition. But I will coach these guys and their rhythmic gymnastics and I have been coaching rhythmic gymnastics for over 10 years now and volunteering with the Special Olympics for about 20 years. Lastly, I'd like to introduce you guys to my fiance, Adam. He and I just got engaged a couple weeks ago. So along with 
working with you guys and helping you guys through this class. I'll also be planning our wedding. Uh, in our free time, other than doing gymnastics, uh, we, we love to go to our church and uh, participate in events there. So I gave you a bit of an overview of my life uh, in terms of everything in my research career, as well as some things that I do in my free time. But now the question really is, what am I even doing here? So I really love chemistry and that's truly why I'm here. My goal is to become a chemistry professor in which I'll primarily teach undergraduates to appreciate chemistry and understand chemistry and specifically why organic chemistry is vital to our everyday lives. I also am going to warn you that I love to use little pictures and memes and GIFs everywhere. So although there are no good chemistry memes as evident by this picture right here, you guys are gonna get to enjoy them with me. So looking into the chemistry a little bit for our class, why are we even going to study organic chemistry? Well, we gotta start with what is organic chemistry? Organic chemistry is the study of the structure and function of carbon-based molecules, as well as how we access these molecules or transform one molecule to another molecule. So organic chemicals are really all around us and within us, and we rely heavily on these molecules as we go through our da daily lives. For example, there's a lot of molecules that we use in our bodies very often, such as cis retinol is a molecule that's important to our vision. It's how we see colors. Additionally, we have things like serotonin or dopamine down here on the bottom, which are both neurotransmitters or, and dopamine is also a hormone, which helps to regulate our mood. We can also have things that aren't necessarily in our body though. We can also have, for example, indigo, is an organic molecule that is carbon-based that is a fabric dye that we can enjoy through its colors. Additionally, we could have something like tert-butyl-thiol, which is a kind of smelly molecule. And what it's used for is an odorant added to natural gas. So when you, hear, when you smell natural gas, you're actually smelling the tert-butyl-thiol that they add into it. We also use organic molecules every day when we touch plastic. So polyethylene is the most common type of plastic used in the world. And so anytime you touch something plastic, you're touching an organic molecule. We can enjoy organic chemistry molecules or organic molecules in different places as well, such as I get enjoyment from caffeine, which is an organic molecule that all of you I'm sure are familiar with. And then it's closely related or cousin, theobromine, which is a very similar compound found in chocolate. Additionally, we can enjoy the smells and flavors of vanillin, which is in vanilla. And then we also have the most stereotypical uses of organic molecules, which are pharmaceuticals, such as Adderall or Tamiflu, the medicine that they give you when you have the flu or ascorbic acid, which is vitamin C. So just by this small chart here, you can see that there's organic molecules literally everywhere in your lives, not necessarily just things that are naturally made, but things that have carbon atoms in them that are very important to how we live our lives. The second half of the course, we'll be talking about biochemistry. Biochemistry is a study that focuses on the reactions that occur in living systems at the molecular level. So for example, biochemists help to understand our health. So knowing biochemistry is helpful to knowing our health and how our body interacts with different things. It's vital to our nutrition. So learning about the metabolism and how your food breaks down at a molecular level into energy. And biochemists study how medicines interact with your body 
at a molecular level as well. Other things that biochemists could study or examples of what they could be focused on are things like the structure of DNA. So actually looking at the carbon and nitrogen and phosphorus and oxygen atoms that make up the DNA of our bodies. We can also talk about genome sequencing. They study uh, human genomes. Lastly, biochemists can also potentially study things such as viruses and how viruses interact with bodies at a molecular level. So what properties of a virus are really what's attacking our body. So this is obviously very important in our everyday lives, especially right now because of the coronavirus. So biochemists are some of the, the scientists that are responsible for researching and helping to study more about this coronavirus and this pandemic that we're all living in right now. Okay, well, that's all we're gonna do for the intro today. I am really excited to get started and to get to know all of you, and I will see you guys in the next video.